Hi, I'm Denny Dahl. I'm a director in the customer success team, and I'd like to talk about a couple of topics that uh, I'm willing to mentor a team on uh, in the spring semester. Um, first of all, a couple words about my background. I'm a physicist. I was trained in high energy theory a long time ago, um, and I've been working in quantum computing for 13 years now. Uh, I worked at D-Wave for about eight years. I worked at Cold Quanta, which renamed themselves to Inflection for three years. And I've been um, at INQ here for a year and a quarter now. Um, so the first problem that uh, I would like to uh, mentor a team on is this one that you see here. It's called QAOA problems with higher order terms. Um, QAOA has been studied a lot in the context of um, max cut problems. Max cut problems are quadratic. In other words, when you write down the Hamiltonian for a max cut problem, you have a combination of linear and quadratic terms. Um, realistic problems very often can have higher order terms. And so instead of uh, building a cubo, a cubo for quadratic unconstrained uh, binary optimization, you may end up with a Hubo for higher order unconstrained binary optimization. Um, so to actually have a concrete problem uh, to work with, um, I'm going to suggest that we look at a family of problems that come from this puzzle that you see on the left side of the slide here. This puzzle is uh, actually called the Kugum puzzle. It's a two-dimensional puzzle. It's made up of simple geometric shapes, and the goal is to place all of these shapes into a rectangular region. Uh, the puzzle that you see here is probably too large for us to actually work with, but we can certainly consider smaller versions of this puzzle. Um, if you use QAOA to actually turn this problem into uh, a quantum circuit, then you'll frequently end up with these uh, circuits that have uh, very complicated higher order terms in them or representations of higher order terms in terms of the so-called uh, parity networks. And so here are a couple of papers on the right side that we might take a look at to help us uh, with heuristics for optimizing the circuits that result from uh, this kind of problem. So this would be one uh, very interesting topic. I would be uh, you know, happy to mentor a group that would like to do some work on this. Um, the other topic uh, actually uh, came out of a challenge problem that I provided um, to SKKU last uh, fall. Um, this problem says, let's look at a Heisenberg spin glass. Uh, a Heisenberg model is a quantum Hamiltonian that has an XX, YY, and ZZ interaction between pairs of spins. And the fact that we're talking about a spin glass means that the weighting term uh, applied to that interaction may vary depending upon uh, the pair of spins we're talking about. Um, so we can certainly uh, uh, pick some small Heisenberg spin glasses to analyze. And in order to um, hit the ground state or to actually just prepare the ground state of these models, uh, sometimes it's convenient to have the so-called XY mixer operators. And you see a paper here on the lower left that talks about uh, these XY mixers. These were introduced actually for QAOA problems. And uh, on the right side of the slide, um, what I'm talking about a little bit here is a generalization of these XY mixer operators. It turns out that there's a very interesting technique that allows you to construct these mixer operators um, that can be controlled by the state of other qubits. The two octahedra that you see on the top right of the slide represent a sector of Hilbert space for a four spin system. Uh, this is the spin zero sector. The um, uh, six vertices or nodes of the octahedra represent the six states um, in the spin zero sector. And the edges of the octahedra represent uh, transition amplitudes or probabilities where you can move probability back and forth between two computational basis states. And the bold uh, edges uh, represent particular mixer operators that we could apply as we're trying to construct the ground state of this problem. So this is kind of an interesting exercise too. Um, I hope you uh, uh, are interested in one or other of these topics, and if so, I'd be very happy to uh, mentor a team and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.
Hi everyone, my name is Willy Abumrad and I'm one of the application scientists at IMQ. I'd be thrilled to be your mentor for this spring for the upcoming quantum computing and optimization program. Throughout our time together, we can dive into the fascinating world of quantum technology and many of its powerful applications. We can explore canonical combinatorial optimization problems such as max cut or the traveling salesman problem. And we can look at how these concepts apply in industries like logistics, finance, and supply chain management. We'll also get some hands-on uh, experience with circuit design, learning how to build and optimize quantum circuits that can solve real world problems. So whether you're new to quantum computing or looking to dive even deeper, I'm here to guide you through it all. Let's push the boundaries of what's possible. Hi everyone, my name is Sangyap Kim and I'm quantum machine learning engineer at IMQ. I'm excited to be mentoring participants in the SKKU mentorship program who are eager to explore the intersection of quantum computing and machine learning. Quantum machine learning is an emerging field that combines the power of quantum computing with machine learning to tackle complex problems. Our goal is to explore whether quantum computing can offer advantages over classical approaches potentially unlocking new possibilities in computation and AI. Throughout this mentorship, we'll dive into how quantum computing can be applied to machine learning, explore areas where quantum machine learning could provide meaningful enhancements, and work on hands-on projects to put innovative ideas into practice. Whether you are new to quantum computing or already experimenting with quantum machine learning frameworks, my goal is to help you navigate this cutting edge field and its practical applications. If you are interested in quantum machine learning and have questions or want to discuss potential projects, please feel free to reach out. I look forward to meeting you all and helping you explore the future of AI and quantum computing. Hello, greetings. I'm describing a project in which we are looking into Shor's algorithm to compute discrete logarithms, specifically for the case of elliptic curves. My name is Martin Rotelor, and I'm a senior director for quantum solutions at INQ. Um, the first project deals with a background research into the, the discrete logarithm problem and looks at a paper that investigated resource counts. There is a software library that came with the paper and in another project, a person who can uh, study these kind of things and who finds it easy to install software and to run it would deal with the installation of the software and investigating the performance. In another project, we would look into the underlying uh, arithmetic of the um, elliptic curve point addition, which essentially boils down to modular divisions. In another project, we will look into the idea to avoid divisions altogether by taking superpositions of points to encrypt um, the, the representation of the curves. And then finally, we will look into ideas motivated by RSA implementations of, of Shor's algorithm to use so-called coset states, also trying to avoid division and, and make the, making the arithmetic cheaper. The, pro the projects are really targeted at students who have a background in mathematics, computer science, electrical engineering, or also physics, but it's important that you have an understanding of what a D log problem is, a discrete logarithm problem, and that you have some basic understanding of modular arithmetic. Thank you for your attention and looking forward to working with you. Goodbye.